we are writing from sources, our evidence has to come from our sources. Okay, so that's something we want students to understand. It's not just about, I think genes make us who we are or not. It's what is the text. When I that. got to the writing part of the training, I really wanted to emphasize a new approach to teaching writing because the task is very different now. Students really have to be able to write from text. The purpose of reading the text then becomes to find evidence to support a claim. So one of the first things we do is we talk about what is a claim, what is evidence, and really provide some definitions and some examples. Claim number two, students who don't come to class won't pass the HSE test. Now let's talk a little bit about evidence. What type of evidence would you accept to prove or disprove that claim? To have attendance, attendance records and Grace. test scores. Test okay, attendance Grace. records Grace. and test scores. My approach to teaching writing is to really notice what I do as a writer, as a kind of expert in the classroom, thinking of the students as apprentices. When I write a persuasive piece of writing, I notice that what I'm mostly doing is stating my position, quoting from the author, and then paraphrasing what the author said. So I want students to use those three kind of strategic moves in their persuasive writing. We would use a graphic organizer to organize, here's what author A is saying, here's what author B is saying, or here's one reason that author A says this, and here's another reason that author A says this to help students organize their writing. That's really what the graphic organizer is for. And also, it's a way for them not to get overwhelmed by the text. So they're choosing the quotes that they're going to use in the essay and writing them in the graphic organizer. It's almost like a practice sheet that they have that they can work from. This particular graphic organizer asks them to pull quotes from the text and then paraphrase what that quote said so that they had all of the stepping stones to being able to write an actual paragraph. And now you get to read the sample paragraph. I want you to circle the topic sentence, underline the quotes, put a wavy line under the paragraph. We looked at a sample paragraph that I had written because I really wanted teachers to see how a teacher written model can help students. And what I do with a teacher written model is I give the students some discussion questions that call their attention to different elements. In this sample paragraph, I wanted to call their attention to the topic sentence, the quotes, and the paraphrases. So we worked on that, and then the teachers used that sample paragraph as a model for themselves to write a paragraph about the other positions. I think what happens with students is they're not really sure what's expected. And a model is like, here it is, here's what's expected. And in the beginning, they might even copy some of it, but I think as they grow confident, they make it more their own. So I'm a very big champion of teacher-written models. This is the outline that Alexis gave her students, and I've been using it successfully in some classes. And For this particular essay, that I drew on the work of one of the teachers that I work with at CUNY to try to simplify it a little bit. There's an intro. There's a body paragraph one, that's what I gave you, right? Summarizing author A, summarizing the yes part. Body paragraph two is what you just wrote, summarizing. So I actually no like part. to teach the essay by teaching the middle first because often students tend to write everything they have to say in the introduction and I want them to build out the middle. Once they've written the kind of, you know, what we call the body, Introduction is a preview, so once they've written the middle, they know what they're going to say and they can give the preview more easily in the introduction. I introduced a template for writing the introduction. Templates have been shown to be very, very useful in helping students write academically. So let's fill in one more. So we have here a controversial issue today is whether our genes determine our personalities or whether our environment plays a bigger part. Some people claim that. Genes are destiny. Okay, thank you. Okay. So you see how that goes? 
That's something you can do as a whole class. Then at the very end, we looked at some of the essays that teachers had written and pulled out some of the language that can be used for paraphrasing. The language that you proficient writers use. First, in can we afford free libraries? Words like first, in addition, Second, those are sequence words that help alert the reader that there are points to come or that this is the first point in a series. This is, these are the kind of phrases that students are going to need as they paraphrase if they're not going to say says or states over and over again. So one thing that you might want to do in your class is what are some other ways you can say he states? The author points out that. Another argument for why. So those are some of the tools that they're going to need and that you're going to need to do this kind of writing. Mm -hmm.